Gobble here. This is Gary Holt. Danny. Electra Mustaine. Matt Hapey. James Labrie. Long Tom. Uh, Scotty in here. Tatiana. Spencer. Sobre la dosis. 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 Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. Jonathan Montenegro. With Jonathan Montenegro. Let's go! Better be listening, because I know where you live. Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Mr. Montenegro. How are you doing, my friend? Was I, you buddy, your pal, your compatriot, your comrade, your paisano, your hermano, your amigo, your mate, your chum, your friend. There's a whole bunch of other words in English and various other languages that means it's me, your homeboy, old D. Randall Bly, a.k.a. Randy B., a.k.a. Grumpy Ass Old Man Uncle Randy. And I am the singer of the Richmond, Virginia based heavy metal band Lamb of God. How are you doing? And Feliz Navidad, my friend. Coming to you from North Carolina. It is Monday, the 26th of 2022, year of our Lord Jesus Christos. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas, dude. Day after Christmas. Hope you're having a good one. You have three questions for me, my friend. Uh, number one, the question is, do you remember when you went to one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Venezuela, Petar, or Barrio Petar, as they call it, in 2010? How was your experience and what motivated you to go well <clears throat> um the experience was quite interesting for me um we rolled in i had some friends who were in the uh a friend of mine who became a friend of mine was interviewed for the uh the as a palace's barn documentary uh he's a venezuelan guy uh, who no longer lives in venezuela but he came and met us at the gig we played there um and i had been hearing about barrio pater for a while and how crazy it was um and i am um when i go travel places uh other countries um i want to go and see how people there live i don't want to go and hide in a resort uh, or only go to tourist places, um, or only go see the most beautiful sites, because I don't think that gives you uh, an accurate assessment of how um, the people there live. And I had heard so much about this place, like, oh, this is the worst neighborhood in Brazil, or, or what, in, in, uh, sorry, in Venezuela. And I was like, you know, let's go have a look, because humanity, no matter, uh, I think people judge uh other people a lot of the times without knowing and i believe that uh humanity there's good people everywhere you know no matter what their economic tradition uh conditions are so um i went with this venezuelan guy and we went through there and we drove in uh, to barrio pater and very aware we went during the way during the day by the way i'm not an idiot but we went during the day and i'm like let's just go see what happens and let's see if we can meet anyone um and and uh you know exchange humanity exchange our humanness uh i i'm not going to be the type of person that goes somewhere and and look at a place like Barrio Pater and, and judge people there and be like, oh, they're horrible, living in these horrible conditions. No, that's that's horrible, you know? And I, I think um, people judge people far too much on their economic circumstances. So um, we went in there and it was indeed a rough neighborhood. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was very rough. We came in there and uh, there, there were. Uh, I remember seeing people uh, grilling a dog uh, on the side of the road. I was like, "Oh, these are hungry people," you know. But it was also, um, and the cars were really crazy. There was one coming towards us that looked like it was barely held together. And the guy, my friend, who was driving me, he's like, "That's a local taxi." And I was like, "It looked like something out of Mad Max." I was like, "Holy shit!" But I saw people on the streets and, and uh, life happening. You know, life happens, um, whether it's a good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood. And a vibrant, 
vibrant sort of life happening. So it was also very interesting because we picked, I didn't know it was this day, but it, it was Semana Santa, which I believe is, uh, which is part of Easter, right? And that's where they burn Judas in effigy. So we're cruising in there and we're seeing all these people burning stuff from a light bulb. So I'm like, what is going on? They're like, oh, it's a religious thing. But we, I saw a bunch of kids standing on the side of the road um, who were who were dancing around this burning Judas thing, and it was part of the religious holiday. I'm like, pull over, let's get out and talk to these kids. And I got out and talked to them, and they were lovely, you know? Um, took some pictures with them, had a nice time, just talked to them for a little bit. And, you know, these are human beings. So I, I wanted to go and meet some of these human beings. That's about it, you know? Um, I'm interested in all aspects of other countries, not just the nice touristy parts. I, I want to know how people live, you know, because I want to communicate with people. I, I feel a need when I go to places to try and understand the culture, you know, and not just be a stupid tourist. So that's that's why I went. And the experience overall was, was uh, it was eye-opening. You know, it's definitely very poor, but it was a good one. Um, Second question, what has been the most complicated part of being in a band like Lamb of God? I think the most complicated part of it uh, <clears throat> is not really anything inner within the band. It's uh, trying to make sense of how this has become a career, really, because uh, we just did it for the love of it. That's why we started the band. I never thought it would be a job. Was ne- I was never like, oh, we're going to, you know... Uh, we're going to become rock stars or whatever. I think the really complicated part of it for me um, has been navigating uh, the fact that something that I would be doing anyway, which is making music, uh, is navigating how that has become a business. You know, and it's not something I'm always entirely comfortable with, to tell you the truth, um, because I'm just a regular dude. You know, that's why we have management, though. You know, I don't handle the business. But I think that has uh, really been the most complicated thing for me is, is like, realizing that it's a business, you know, at this point. Because, uh, you know, we employ a lot of people. Like, people were able to buy their family uh, Christmas gifts this year because we employ them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a band that we... That, you know, it's our art and we love it, but it is a business. And for me, accepting that um, is is strange. It's strange because I don't come from the business world. I never had any money, you know. I'm, I'm not a, a rich kid or anything weird like that. Um, just just learning to, to be a, a professional musician, I guess, is the most complicated part. The writing the music and, and touring and playing shows and all that shit, that's fun. You know, that's easy for me. Um, learning the business has is, is been complicated. Uh, the third question is, what is the best memory of your childhood? I have a lot of good memories from my childhood. Um, but I think the best memories uh, really are from when I was living on my grandmother's farm um, and just living out in the country and growing up where the outdoors I had two things to amuse me out in the country. There was no computers in, no internet, no nothing like that. Number one is the outdoors. So being in the woods all the time with my brothers, that was our that was our playground, that was our world, that was our internet or the woods. Um, being in the woods constantly <clears throat> and then living there and being around my grandmother uh, and around my great uncle and my great aunt who lived next door just sitting there and listening to them tell stories about the old days so you know sitting around shucking corn because you know we grew vegetables and um had chickens for our own eggs just sitting in the in the backyard shelling butter beans shucking corn listen to them tell stories of how it was when they were children you know uh, many 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 years ago very cherished uh, memories for me from my childhood fishing with my brothers in the pond just going catfishing walking in the woods hanging out with my grandma that was that was the, the best for me so i hope that answers your questions dude uh, i hope you are well and uh once again uh feliz navidad merry christmas and uh happy new year i can't remember how to say that in espanol um but um 
Feliz Años or is that happy, happy birthday? I can't remember. Um, but happy new year as well. Take care, my friend. Hope to see you on the road soon.